Did Apple mess up and give us a better option than the M2 MacBook Air for less money? Last month, I made a video about the M2 MacBook Air where I've covered everything there is to cover about that laptop, but I left one thing out of the picture, its position in the lineup and its rivalry with another very capable MacBook that may actually be a better deal for 90% of the people. In this video, I will tell you how you can spend $500 less and get a laptop that is even better in some cases. So buckle up and let's start. Before I reveal to you this super duper cool laptop, let's rewind the clock and see what makes MacBooks great. Why do millions of people love them so much? First date, 2008, and first unibody MacBooks. Before that, MacBooks were made out of plastic, aluminum, or titanium, but they did not look premium at all. Then the 2008 MacBook Air and 2009 MacBook Pro reinvented the wheel and made MacBooks sexy. Full aluminum enclosure with no seams, glass screen and perfect keyboard. Okay, the first item our super laptop should have is the design and build quality. In 2015, Apple made another revolution, Retina display. It was a substantial upgrade back in the day. Brightness, contrast, and resolution were improved dramatically, and those laptop screens look great even now, seven years later. So the second item, the screen should be good. Next, in 2016, Apple made its biggest design decision yet, slimmer, less pores and more compactness. This principle stays to this day. So the third thing our ideal MacBook should do is be modern looking. What else? Oh, the performance, for sure. For the past couple of years, Apple has been making its laptops very powerful. And now you can think about a MacBook without thinking about power. So is there a laptop that satisfies all those demands? That is at the same time powerful, modern looking, well built and with a great screen. Yes, there is one. And what if I tell you that it also has great battery life, supports the latest macOS, can be repaired cheaply, does all the work done effortlessly, and costs only $700. What is this secret laptop? Are you ready? The M1 MacBook Air. Yes, the M1 MacBook Air in many ways is a better deal than the M2 MacBook Air, but why? How can this laptop after two years still be a king? Well, there are a few things that make it great. First, that design. I know a lot of people like that boxier design of new Pro MacBooks and M2 MacBook Air, but you just cannot beat the wedge. Wedge-shaped MacBook Air offers totally different sensations and user experience. This design goes all the way back to 2008 and like a good wine has aged perfectly. Now the M1 MacBook Air is seen as a modern classic, refined and perfected. Its aluminum body looks sleek and modern without showing its age. That design is really, really good. All the seams are invisible, the hinge is sturdy and opens with a pleasing resistance, and the shape itself just screams lightweight. This wet shape, tapered edges, and sloping form make this MacBook feel almost like paper. When you hold it and look at it, you don't think about that thicker part. You are seeing only the thin edge. This visual trick makes it seem even slimmer, almost like a piece of paper. For many of you, this design will actually be better because typing on the M one Air is slightly more comfortable. So if you are a student and typing huge documents is your mundane routine, there will be no better laptop for it than the M1 MacBook Air. What about the screen? The 13.3 inch display is definitely not a weak side of this MacBook. Bright, colorful and super high resolution, it is better than on any Windows laptop at the same price. Watching movies and YouTube on this screen is pure bliss. Yes, it doesn't have ProMotion like MacBook Pros and it's slightly dimmer than the M2 Air screen, but it doesn't have that notch. I know I have said many times that you're getting used to the notch, but even after two years, I still notice it. it still bugs me sometimes just the idea of a notch on a laptop and coming back to the traditional notchless screen of this MacBook Air feels like putting on your favorite slippers. And it supports P3 white color gamut, which is a very nice thing to have for such a price. This MacBook can become a great photo editing machine for budding photographers simply because of the screen, perfectly calibrated by default, super sharp and impressively bright. That's all I have to say 
about the display of this MacBook. Now, to the best part, its performance. May surprise you, but the M1 inside is just as fast as it was the day I bought it. My model here is the cheapest one with 8 core CPU, 7 core GPU, 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. And believe me, it just flies. M1 is a very, very powerful chip and delivers a stunning performance in a completely fanless design. Of course, the baseline M2 MacBook Air has one extra GPU core and faster RAM, but don't be fooled. I have used both of them and the M1 Air performs just as good. The apps open instantly, web browsing is smooth sailing. If you think that M2 will give you much more performance, it's not true. The M2 is definitely faster, but only by 10 to 15 percent, which is completely unnoticeable in real life. That extra GPU core makes no difference in everyday use, just like that ProRes media engine. M1 is still a king, fast, snappy, and very reliable. Now, you can't overestimate the importance of good performance, especially when you're dealing with large files. When you have huge files to take care of, it can be very handy to just compress them, you know, make them smaller. Modern compression software can turn heavy files into smaller ones without damaging the data or decreasing the quality of files. Personally, I like to use Wondershare AnySmall for all my file compression needs. Wondershare AnySmall is a powerful tool for audio and video file compression and supports lossless compression of extensive data. It is compatible with over a thousand different formats, the parameters may be altered, including the compression type, chosen file size, and compression ratio, data rate, and preferred resolution. It offers four key features, audio from video extraction, video compression, video conversion, and audio conversion. You may easily convert your videos to almost any audio or video format. The baseline M1 MacBook Air has only 256 gigs of storage, and if you're doing any creative work, the space gets filled up quickly. With any small, you can fix that. Compression is also useful if you are trying to send big videos via email, upload them to social media, or simply store too much music. High-speed lossless compression is supported along with the ability to preview the result before saving it to the disk. It is a vital tool for batch compression of multimedia data in various formats. The sleek, dark interface welcomes you and, and explains three easy actions you must complete to compress your files. Adding or dragging files to the main window, determining the output size, and beginning the compression. That's how easy it is. And to learn more more about any small, just click the link in the description. Now back to discussing our MacBook. When it comes to battery life, both laptops are equally great. M1 is still very power efficient and MacBook Air with M1 can easily last 10 to 15 hours of binge watching YouTube, browsing the web and texting via iMessage. Even under heavy loads, these two chips perform identically. Seven to eight hours under heavy workload is a very, very respectable number. So if you think that cheaper, older laptop is worse in every way, you're fundamentally not right. There's only one thing you may notice that M1 Air does worse, the FaceTime camera. M1 Air has a 720p camera, while M2 Air has 1080p camera. The difference is noticeable, especially when you are on video calls, but the M1 Air is perfectly fine for studying casual calls with friends and so on. When it comes to ports and connectivity, both the M1 and M2 MacBook Air have the same arrangement. Two Thunderbolt 3 ports that support USB 4 and USB 3.1 Gen 2 speeds. Both devices are capable of supporting just one external display, however. M2 has an extra MagSafe charging port, which frees up one Type-C. It doesn't really matter because you need a dongle anyway, and almost every dongle now comes with a Type-C powerful port for charging. So technically, you won't have any difficulties with M1 or M2. Both laptops also support the same Wi-Fi 6 wireless standard and Bluetooth 5.0 if it matters to you. But you are not here to hear about similarities. You want to know where this older, cheaper laptop is better. If we talk performance again, the M1 MacBook will actually crush the M2 Air in some tasks. For example, file transfer. Every workflow that requires loading files from the SSD or writing on it will be two times faster on one. Yes, because of that 
memory chip layout. Two 128 chips are faster than one 256 gig. Yes, the difference can be seen only in a selected number of cases, which involve file transfers, but it's there. It doesn't mean that M2 Air is unusable. No, 99% of the time, these laptops will perform identically, but in that 1%, that one time you really need a faster SSD, the M1 will be a winner. And the second thing that M1 Air does better is throttling and thermal performance. If you watch any disassembly video, you will see that M1 actually has a smaller heat sink. M2 doesn't have that, thus heats up more. It's no secret that M2, after a few minutes, go as high as 105 degrees centigrade. In heavy tasks, M1 will maintain its performance longer, not by much, but longer. These five minutes, the M1 can win in heavy tasks before throttling can translate to half an hour of waiting time on M2. If you are planning on doing bursty tasks up to five minutes, both laptops will be identical. But if you go over that time, M1 will perform better and finish faster. What amazes me even today is just how well the M1 holds up. It pushes through everything a casual user can throw at it without breaking a sweat. M1, even with a 7-core GPU, still leaves a huge headroom for personal growth. You can start learning coding on this thing and you'll have no problems with it. Video editing? Easy. It's hard to count how many videos our team has edited on this M1 Air. 3D modeling? Not a problem. Music production? Done. You can do all that and still have some power left to spare. Most people underestimate what a difference a good set of speakers makes. M1 Air has speakers aimed at the viewer and M2 Air has them hidden near the hinge. This makes sound from M2 Air not significantly better. M1 is slightly louder, however M2 has more bass. So if you are planning on watching movies without headphones, the M1 will perform almost the same, if not better. The M1 MacBook Air was already a capable machine for everyday computing, productivity, and even video editing. Now it's just a lot of a computer for only $700. You can pick it up, a refurbished one, on Amazon right now for $700. Yes, $700. I will remind you that Apple sells M2 Air for $1,200. Even refurbished ones are still $400 bucks more expensive than this M1 Air. For half the price of this M1 Air, you're not getting much. A newer design, new screen, and improved FaceTime camera. And that's it. For only $700, you are getting an immensely powerful laptop with a great screen, amazing battery life, and classic design. Usually, it's easy to recommend the new model over the old one, but in this case, the M2 MacBook Air feels more like a completely new model rather than a replacement of the old one. And since the original M1 MacBook Air can be bought at a significantly lower price, the answer to the question of which you should should buy may not seem so simple. I think that for any student, casual user, or teacher, there is no better laptop than M1 Air. It gives you so much and still leaves headroom for growth. That's why I think that it's a better deal than M2 Air. Those still holding on to an Intel-based MacBook Air may want to consider upgrading as Apple touts a 15x increase in power over the older Intel models. However, those who already have an M1 Air probably don't need to upgrade unless you really want the MagSafe connector. And if you want to get a new design, you are welcome to pay extra. But if you want the best laptop money can buy, then the M1 MacBook Air is a no-brainer. <laughs>